Hello, this is Pastor Sam Velez, and I'm so glad that you're joining us for our service. We hope you enjoy this message today, that it blesses your life and your families. We love you. We're starting a brand new series called Counter Culture. Counter Culture. And the reason why we're starting this series is because we're, we're talking about what it looks like for me and you to live differently than the world. We're living in a, in a society today, in a culture today that's full of darkness, it's full of hate, it's full of anger, it's full of violence. But God has called us to be a people of life and love. God has called us to be a people that live differently. And when we live differently, people will also live differently through our lives. Because they see the God in me and you. Because as long as I have Christ, I live differently. I operate differently. That's why when Pastor Alex is talking about offering, he's talking about it in a way that is different. Because if you don't know God, you will always feel like you're always suffering. You're always going to feel like, man, God's never going to meet my need. You're always going to feel like you're never going to have enough. But when you find God, you have the God that is more than enough. A God that provides for all of my needs. Amen. So that's the kind of God we serve. That's why I'm saying we have a different point of view. We have a different way of living. We have a different way of speaking. We did a series in January all about our words. Because we carry Christ, we should speak different and act different and live different. So the next couple of weeks, today's more like the appetizer where we're talking about counter culture. We're countering to what the world is expecting people to live like and to think like and to talk like. And we're going to be who God's created us to be. And there's a certain stand and there's a certain way. In fact, the Bible says this. If you have your Bibles, we're going to open up with this in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, 6 through 10. If you have your Bibles, Colossians, chapter 2, 6 through 10. Just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down deep into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Verse 8 says this, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. For in Christ lives in all the fullness of God in a human body. So you are also complete through your union with Christ who is the head over every other ruler and authority. And authority. I'm going to stop there for a second. One more time, Paul is telling the people that they got a new life in Christ, that you're a new person. And because you have Christ in you, you are complete and you're united. In fact, because Christ is in you, you got a different authority. You got a different way. He says this. He says in the very beginning, stay rooted and be built in Christ. He says stay rooted and be built in Christ. Stay rooted. That means stay connected to Christ. So much that you're not going to be moved by the weather. You're not going to be moved by the tactics of this world. You're not going to be afraid. Like No, you are so rooted. Your spirit is so rooted in who God is in your life. You cannot change for other people. And then he says, be built in Christ. In fact, be built. Be, like we're doing today. We're building ourselves on the word of God. On what God's word says. Because God's word is final. And if I trust God, I trust his word. I trust what God has to say. I trust what God has to say over my life and what he thinks and what he believes is best for my life. Because like I said earlier, this world, we're living in a world full of hate, full of people that don't want any kind of thing with God. They want to do what they want, say what they want, act like they want, and they have the freedom to do so. But can I tell you that there is blessing in obedience there is blessing and submission. There is blessing and when, we, when I decide to surrender my life to God, there's a blessing in that. And there's, a, there's, there's something that we can gain that nobody else can give us through that. You can try it as much as you want. You can do whatever you want. You can leave this place and ignore anything, everything I said. But out there, you experience the consequences of your choice. So here's the thing. What you choose today decides your tomorrow. What you choose to do today decides 
your tomorrow. I want to stay on a passage today for the most part. But before I do that, I want to talk, like I said, our world is full of hate. And Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, talks about this. He warns about this. Thousands of years ago, before 2023, he talks about what it looks like when people begin to act like this. And if, once you read it, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, that's exactly how we are living like today. So I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 5, 18 through 20. Isaiah chapter 5, 18 through 20. It says this. It says, what sorrow for those who drag their sins behind them with ropes made of lies, who drag wickedness wickedness behind them like a cart. They even mock God and say, hurry up and do something. We want to see what you can do. Let the Holy One of Israel carry out his plan, for we want to know what it is. What sorrow for those who say that evil is good and good is evil, that dark is light and light is dark, that bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter. Do, not, do we not live in a world like that? I don't know how many people have tried to tell me, because when I try to talk about an issue, they, they call it hate. When the reality is, is I'm not doing it because I hate you, it's because I love you. But we've distorted what love is because we think love is just an emotion. And because it's just an emotion, it should please me. And if you're saying something that doesn't please me, then you don't love me. And so people hate church and they hate God because they think, oh, it's because everything they say comes against me. And the reality is it's because we love you. We love you. I'm not standing out there on loop 20 with a sign saying you're going to hell. You don't see me doing that. And the church will never do that. But for some reason, culture today wants to twist things and make it seem like that's who we are because of other Christians that have done that in the past. And if you've experienced that, can I tell you something? I'm sorry that that's happened. But those people that have done that does not represent everybody. Doesn't represent everybody. Is hell real? Yes, it is. Is heaven real? Yes, it is. And our desire and my desire is that you would be with Christ forever. That's why we say what we say. And that's why we have to counter hate with love. But here's the thing about love. Just because I love you doesn't mean I have to accept everything you do. As a parent, because you love your kids, that means that you have parameters for their life. So that they don't make mistakes or so you can protect them from serious injuries. Me and you are not like, oh, I love my kids. So that means that they can do whatever they want. Okay, so that means they could put their hand in the fire. Well, no, that's going to hurt them. Exactly. How much more God with his children? How much more God that's like, hey, I'm protecting you. I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to make sure that you're okay. I'm trying to make sure that you don't get into this because if you get into this, this is the consequence of what you do. And today I want to talk about love. I want us to make sure that love, you have to understand something, church, this morning, that love is not just an emotion. It's a direction. Love, church, has a target. It has an aim. And if we're going to be people that counter hate with love, then we have to understand what we're targeting, what we're aiming for. And John, who wrote the book of Revelation, a lot of people look at Revelation and they think it's a scary book. Pastor Sam, I don't like to read it. I kind of try to avoid it every time because it just scares me because the end of the world and blah, 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 blah. The reality is that we need the book of Revelation because it shows us our promises. It shows us that we get to experience what God has promised his people. And so John writes this, but before he writes Revelation, I want you to go to 1 John. And this is where we're going to sit out the whole, this whole Sunday today. I want you to go to 1 John chapter 2, 15 through, 7, through 27. 
We're going to park at this passage the whole day. John 2, 15 through 27. 1 John chapter 2, 15 through 27. It says, do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And this world is fading away, along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Amen. Amen. If you're new to church, when, when, when he writes that they will live forever, is that, here's the thing, me and you will not be separated from God forever. Because death is not just physical, it's me being away from the presence of God forever. And he says, but if you, but anyone who does what, God, what pleases God will live forever. Dear children, the last hour is here. You have heard that the Antichrist is coming, and already many such Antichrists have, have appeared. From this we know that the last hour has come. These people left our churches, but they never really belonged with us. Otherwise, they would have stayed with us. When they left, it proved that they did not belong with us. But you are not like that, for the Holy One has given you his spirit. And all of you know the truth. So I am writing to you not because you don't know the truth, but because you know the difference between truth and lies. And who is a liar? Anyone who says that Jesus is not the Christ. Anyone who denies the Father and the Son is an antichrist. Anyone who denies the Son doesn't have the Father either. But anyone who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Verse 24, so you must remain faithful to what you have been taught from the beginning. If you do, you will remain in fellowship with the Son and with the Father. And, th and in this fellowship, we will enjoy eternal life. Enjoy the eternal life he promised us. I am writing these things to warn you about those who want to lead you astray. But you have received the Holy Spirit. He lives within you, so you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know. And what he teaches is true. It is not a lie. So just as he has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. Amen. So John is writing to the people. John is already at the end of his life when he's writing this. this is, he, he's already an older man. And he's letting people know, hey, to counter the hate is to know that you have to love God but not the world. And if you're new to church and you just came in right now, I'm here to let you know. To love is not just to let you do what you want. To love is to tell you what you need. To tell you what you need to walk away from. It's crazy to me that we can listen to doctors and they can tell us all the things that's wrong with us. And we're like, yes, I'll do whatever you tell me. But, as, but when, when a pastor comes and says something, they're like, oh, no, you hate me. Forget you. Blocked. It's crazy to me that we can accept what other people say. But when God's word comes to our lives, for some reason, we wrestle with it. And I'm here to let you know, Jesus said in John chapter 10 that he has come to give us life and life in abundance, church. That's the God that we serve. A God that wants to give you a life and life in abundance. A life of peace, not a life of destruction, not a life of anxiety. That's not God. Not a life of fear. Not a life of wondering, oh man, am I going to make it tomorrow? Am I going to be okay? No, no. God wants to give you more. A life in abundance, church. Something that you can never fathom in your mind, that's what God wants to give you. Because he's a good father. And like I said, I talked about targets. And the time my message is simply this, look at the target. I don't know if you've ever gone to a shooting range here at the gun club, the arena gun club, or wherever go, you shoot in someone's ranch. You shoot, I don't know if you used to shoot, people still shoot at cans and all that stuff. Whatever it is. You ever have, you have a ranch, let me know. So I want to go shoot. So, but whenever you go shooting, you're what? You have a target. If you go to Arena Gun Club, you get to rent the target that you want. Sometimes they're like zombies, Last of Us, whatever it is that is happening. 
And, and with that target, you get to aim and you get to shoot as much as your heart desires. Isn't that beautiful? Thank God for Texas. And so you shoot and you got the target and, 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 you, and here's the thing about shooting though and here's the thing about targets is that you, when you, if you're not an experienced shooter, someone has to come and teach you the right posture and the right position. And then they have to show you the surroundings like when you go to arena gun club, you have to take, if, you, if you've never gone, they make you do all these things. It's a waste of time or whatever. And you, you, you do all these things because they want you to be ready. They want you to know the surroundings. They want you to know that, hey, this is the only lane that you can shoot at. You can't just get the gun and decide to be like Rambo and just, oh, you know, or Scarface and think that you can shoot anywhere. No, 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 no. You, they, there's parameters to how you can shoot. And then they try to teach you sight. The right sighting, if you own a gun, you understand that sighting is everything. If not, you'll be looking at the target, but your shot's going to go that way. Wrong sighting. And it's the same thing with our lives. Our positions and our settings and our sight play a big part in how we aim at love. How we aim at loving God and loving people and loving ourselves, how we aim to counter hate has to deal with these things. So I'm here to let you know, since we're talking about targets and we're talking about sight, watch your position. Watch your position. Watch what you conform to. Watch what you are deciding today to conform to. Are you going to conform to what God has said, or are you going to conform to what man has said? When we first started our series on, on words, I read Romans 12 too, which talks about the renewing of your mind. And I said, if you do not transform, you will always conform. And I say that today again. If you do not choose to transform into who God has created you to be, you always conform to everyone else. You always will conform to the culture. You always conform to a lot. You will always conform if you do not transform. You'll conform to a lot of things. You'll conform to what people are saying, to what's popular. You'll conform to what, what your coworkers or classmates or whoever, fam, sometimes it's family members. You'll conform to it. And when John is writing to his people, he's trying to get them to understand, watch your position. Watch out because this world has a pattern. And he says the cravings, the appetites, the desires of the flesh. And he talks about basically the lust of the eyes, what we, what we watch. And then he talks about having pride in our possessions and the things that we own. He says, watch out for these things. Watch out when Paul writes in the book of Colossians that we read earlier, what does he say? Watch out from, from philosophies, from the human way of thinking. Watch out that you don't accept these things. He says, watch. Philosophies are, are a way of thinking. Philosophy in itself is not wrong, but when we put our philosophies in other things, that's where it gets tricky. So he says, watch out. That's why when we come to church, me and you are looking through a biblical worldview. Our lens is through the Bible. And because our lens is through the Bible, it affects the way we, we make decisions and what we see. It changes the way we respond to things. That the word of God is our lens. In fact, here's the definition for a biblical worldview. It says it's a framework of ideas and beliefs which a Christian individual or group interprets the world and interacts with the world. And interacts with the world. In other words, it affects how we live. It shapes what we do. And so John is trying to say, hey, I need you to get this biblical worldview so that when the times of testing come, you know how to respond. You know what to do next. You're not going to fall like everybody else. You're not going to fold when the hard times come. Because Jesus said 
there will be hard times. There will be times of suffering. But Jesus also said, and I love this, but take heart because I have overcome the world. In other words, take heart because victory is in me. Take heart because although there are times of suffering, suffering will not have you forever. Amen. And so we got to watch out for these philosophies. We live in a postmodern world. Postmodern world is basically this, and you probably hear it all the time. Oh, your, that's your truth is your truth, and my truth is my truth. Oh, that's your truth? You can live your truth. Live your truth. Whatever you think. We live in a world that thinks that way. That whatever truth is to you, live that way. And so what they're really saying is this, is that I don't conform to God. God has to conform to me. I make God the way I think he should be instead of who he is. And so when we are surrounded with that church, that's why I said watch your position. Watch that you're not deceived. Watch that you're not easily influenced just because someone stands in a podium in the White House and they say certain things. Don't. We live in a crazy world, church. Let's be honest. It took us days to shoot down a balloon. We live in a crazy world. And the world is constantly changing. It's constantly changing. Pastor, uh, Pastor Evangelist Tiff, when he came, he talked about end times. And you can follow him on YouTube. He has a lot of teachings. We're going to do a series on end times just to help people understand what does that look like. But one of the things he said was, things are going to change regardless. There are things are going to happen. And your mind and your heart has to be ready so that when Christ comes, you're ready to go. And things are already happening, church. They're already happening. That's why we have to watch our position because our position matters, church. You got to watch the things that you pursue because what you choose to pursue, you experience. What you choose to pursue in your life, and if you are deciding that I choose to pursue the world, then you do not have Christ. Because Jesus said, when you find me, you find life. Jesus said in the gospel, he says, I am the bread of life. You will never go hungry. He said, I am living water. You will never be thirsty. And when you have an aim on Christ, you spend less time trying to fill it with other things. You will spend less time, less money, less emotions trying to fill it with other things that can't fill what God can fill. Can I be honest with you, church? If you can't live without it, you won't be able to live with it either way. If it's not God, you'll just move on to the next. And this is what happens sometimes, church. When we try to fill ourselves with other things and we pursue other things, we, we feel like we can't, we need to pursue because we can't do without it and without realizing that that very thing is just filling us for a moment, but then we move on to the next and to the next. And I need to try this now, and I need to try that now, and I need to do this now. And before you know it, you've wasted 10 years of your life trying to find what was next. Trying to fix what could possibly help you. So church, watch your position. And church, watch your surroundings. If you, I want to go back to First John. Let's go to verse 18 one more time. It says, dear children, the last hour is here. You have heard that the Antichrist is coming, and already many such Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that the last hour has come. John is saying we're living in the last days, and there's a lot of Antichrists that have already come. And the Antichrist that have already come are people that will tell you that God is not Christ, that Christ is not Christ, that he is not God. And he's saying, watch out for people that will steer you away 
from who God is. Watch for people that will tell you that he is not God. Watch for people that will try to tell you that, hey, I think your Bible's wrong, bro. I don't think it's just through Jesus that you can go to heaven. And they do the little TikTok information about it. All of a sudden, we have theologians in our TikToks. I don't have one, but people show me videos, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. No wonder they want to ban it, you know. He says, watch out for anybody that will lead you astray. And look what Jesus said. This is, John says his way after Jesus has, has already gone back. In Matthew 7, 15, Jesus said, beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. Beware of false prophets. They will come as harmless people, but they are vicious as wolves. Beware of people that will draw you away from Christ. Beware of people that you surround yourself with that will get you to compromise your beliefs and to make you conform because they don't know how to compromise. I mean, they don't know how to stay, you know, connected to God. They'll get you to conform so they don't feel like they're the only ones disobeying. Watch out for people that will get you to conform to the culture. It's not just people on stages, it's people that you talk to. It's not people with a mic, it's, it, although it is most of the time. YouTube and all these things, it's also people that you talk to day to day. Jesus said that you will know someone by their fruit. You'll know them by their fruit. That's why the Holy Spirit has come into our lives to give us discernment. To say, hey, you know what? I know you're saying this and you're trying to be nice about it, but you're way off. And sometimes it's in friendships that filter in that will get you to compromise what God has already said in his word. But I thank God that God gives us the grace to turn it around. God gives us the grace and the mercy. The Bible says that our mercies are renewed every single morning, that he gives us opportunities to turn around and not look back. I'll never forget when I was living in Pittsburgh, and um, at the time I was a young adult pastor. I was an associate. I was a young adult pastor there at Revival Today Church. And um, there was this couple that was coming to our, they were young adults, they were new. And uh, they had been coming, and then they started coming on Sundays, and, and, and they were starting to be part of the church. And I remember one Sunday, they, they felt the conviction of the Holy Spirit so real to them. And they came up to me one Sunday. I had no idea. I knew they were dating, but they had come up to me. They said, you know, Pastor Sam, we got to confess something to you. And I said, yeah, what's up? They're like, we know that we're wrong, but we want to make things right. We've been living with each other for the past six months. And we know that the word of God says to be married. And to do things the right way. So we want to get married. I said, okay. Easy. We set everything up. The last thing I did was I, I married this couple before I moved back to Laredo. And can I tell you something? When they decided to do that, days before their, their little ceremony, it was only them, them two and two friends. They were like, we, don't, we want to do this right, and we want to do this fast. I said, okay, let's do it. But before their wedding, they had visited me in the office there in Pittsburgh. And as we're going down the stairs, Pastor Jonathan was walking down the stairs too. And he's talking to this couple, and they start sharing their story. And you know what Pastor Jonathan ends up doing? He's like, you know what? I love your story. Here's $2,000 for your honeymoon. Why do I say this story? Because every time me and you choose to go in obedience, there's a blessing that follows. And that's not just for this couple that I'm talking about back in Pittsburgh. This is for me and you, that every time me and you make the choice to turn around from our mistakes and to turn to God, 
there's a blessing that follows, church. There is a blessing that follows. There, is, there are some of you in this room that think it's too late, and I'm here to remind you, it's not too late. It's not too late. Today's the day that you can make things right with God and you see your life transform for the better. But I also share this story because if we're not careful, that couple could have listened to other voices and be like, it's okay. Keep living together. It's okay. Go on vacations together. It's okay. No, no, no. They decided to make a change and look what God did. They're married now. God has blessed them. She's a, a, a hairstylist and now she has more and more clients than she's had ever before. All because of one decision to turn. Turn away. That's why I'm telling you, watch out with the voices that church that you allow in your spirit and allow in your life. Watch out and make sure. The Bible says to test the spirits. What does that mean? To test that it, it's going along with the word of God. Because someone can talk to you very eloquently and it sounds very nice, but they could deceive you in a deeper way than you think. That's why the Bible says to test the spirits. That's why when we come to church, we're always going back to the word of God. I feel like since I've been here, that's all I try to get you to understand. The word of God, the word of God. I probably sound like a broken worker because you have to understand that it is the word of God that leads us. The Bible says in the Psalms, it's, it directs my path. It's a light in the darkness, church. So watch your surroundings. Watch your position. Watch your surroundings, church. And watch what you focus on. Because what you focus on matters. What you choose to focus on matters. Can I be honest? If all you focus on is how bad you are and how wrong you are, you will never see how you can be made right with Christ. And you will never change. If all you're focused on is, oh my gosh, look at this world. Look at what's happening. Look at the balloons. Look at all these things. If that's all you're focused on, then you will never have peace. You will always be afraid, stressed, wondering what could be. That's why when we started this message, church, we live through a, on, in a different realm. We walk in, in a different kingdom. God protects his people. He's watching over us. But watch your focus. And allow the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit to come towards the end. And I'm getting ready to close with this. Today was more like a teaching, and I hope that you understood what I'm saying. And if you're new here, I want you to understand, I love you. That's why I'm saying what I'm saying. I'm not saying it to hurt you, make you feel uncomfortable. No, 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 no. I'm here because I love you. And I want you to be better. I want your family to be blessed. I want you to be blessed. I want you to go to sleep blessed, wake up blessed. I want you to be whole. Because that's what God desires. Verse 25 through 27, we're going to end with this. First John 25 through 27. And in this fellowship, we enjoy the eternal life he promised us. I am writing these things to warn you about those who want to lead you astray. But you have received the Holy Spirit. And he lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know. And what he teaches is true. It is not a lie. So just as he has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. In other words, church... Remain. Abide in Christ. When I abide in Christ, it shows it right there. It reveals salvation for me and you. It reveals that there's a way out. It reveals that when I'm abiding in Christ and when the Holy Spirit is coming, it reveals that, man, there's a way that God's going to take me out of this. And it also, when the Holy Spirit's at work in you, and when God is leading your life, it also reveals what's not right. And you get to recognize what's deception when someone's lying, when it's not true, 
you recognize it because God, you are in communion with God. Church, there's a blessing in abiding in God. There's a blessing in remaining. Jesus said in the Gospels, remain in me for apart from me, you can do nothing. He says, remain in me. And then years later, John says the same thing. Remain in Christ. As long as you remain in Christ, it keeps you steady. As long as the Holy Spirit's working in your life, it keeps you steady. It protects you, watch, watches over you. It says remain in Christ. Remain in him. As we open up this series, church, how do we counter hate? We counter it with love. And like I said from the very beginning, it's not the love that we think all the time. It's this kind of love that it's not just there to see you for you, but it's also there to protect you. And that means sometimes it has to put parameters to make sure you don't fall astray. Love is not just accepting everything just because that's love. No, no, love is also, hey, I love you enough to protect you. I love you enough to tell you like it is. If nobody else wants to, I will. God has anointed every single one of us to do amazing things. He has anointed us to do amazing things. But the power of the anointing comes from abiding in him. As long as I'm anointed, as long as I'm connected to Christ, I carry the power of Christ. And God wants to continue to do miracles in this church and your life as well. Thank you so much for joining our service and for listening to us. We are located at 4519 East Del Mar Boulevard in Laredo, Texas. And we hope that you continue to be a part of our ICM family.